So let's take a moment to cover a really important concept, and that's called the Sloss Sequence. We've actually already talked about Sloss Sequences. If you remember talking about our transgressions and regressions, that sea level rises and sea level falls and facies changes. We've, so we've already discussed Sloss Sequences. But now let's put it into a diagram, which is what we have here. So when we look at this diagram, I want you to notice a couple of things. Okay, over here, right, we have geologic time. In the middle, this is actually sea level. And over here, we have mountain building events. Right, because sometimes those can actually affect, right, sea level. So when we look at this diagram, I want you to, when you see this, think of this line right here as high sea level. And over here, I want you to think about this as low sea level. So let's take a look at our first sequence that we're going to learn about, and that's the Sock Sequence. So the Sock Sequence, let's go back here to the late Proterozoic. Remember, what was going on as far as glacial cycle? Hopefully you said Snowball Earth. So we had very high glaciation. As we entered into the Cambrian, right, that all started to melt. So we started to get high glaciation. So you see, look at water, or low glaciation, our water level tends to get higher. Now, let's go back to what we talked about way back in Chapter 5. What is going to be the cause of a transgression? So let's, let's take a moment to review this. Transgression is a sea level rise. And remember, that is caused by melting glaciers and that, right, how do we melt the glaciers? We have to have a continent moving off the pole. Because remember, if I don't have a continent over the south or north pole, we cannot establish that big glacier, which means sea level is going to rise. Now, how do we make a regression? Well, remember, a regression is a sea level fall. Okay, that means our glaciers are growing big. And how do we grow, grow our glaciers? Right, we have to have a continent on the pole. Right, we have to have a continent over the pole in order to grow those big glaciers. So let's go back over here to our Sloss sequence. So if here we are, right, in the late Proterozoic, moving into the Cambrian, and we have a sea level rise, that means right here we have a continent off the pole. Well then look, what happens right here? Sea level falls. So that means right here we have a continent moving back on the pole. Now here's the beauty of it. It's going to be the same every time. Look at this. In the middle Ordovician, sea level rises. That means right here we have a continent off the pole. And look at over here. In the early Silurian, sea level begins to fall. We have a continent on the pole. Look, we're going to move in the Devonian. Sea level gets higher. Continent off the pole sea level drops on. So hopefully you're catching that drift, right? That that continental position is going to play into whether we have high sea level or low sea level. Now, the next thing I want to talk about here really quickly is the fact that each of these sequences are bound by an unconformity. Because that's going to be really important. So this is how we recognize them. So our sloth sequences are bounded by and unconformity. So in that picture, you're going to see a picture here in a few minutes, right, when you get to the Cambrian geology of the Grand Canyon, right? I took that picture of the Grand Canyon last summer, and I was able to recognize our first sloth sequence, the sock sequence. And I recognized it because we have an unconformity on the bottom and an unconformity on the top. So let's think about this. So let's say here we are sea level is low. If sea level is low, that means my land is exposed. 
which means, right, I've got the rain beating down on it and the ice moving across it and the wind blowing across it. So what's that gonna what's that gonna do to the surface of this land? Right, well, hopefully you said it's going to erode it. So what do we make when we have an erosion erosional event? An unconformity. Well, now let's say sea level rises. Right, this whole area is covered by sea. So we're gonna deposit different kinds of rocks. Right, so let's say here we have some rocks. Right, that are getting deposited. Life is happy. And then let's say, uh-oh, sea level falls. We have a regression. And now this area is exposed again. Right? So the rain's going to beat down on it. The wind's going to whip across it. Ice is going to move across it. And what are we going to do to the surface of this red layer? Hopefully you said erode it. So we have an unconformity. So hopefully you can see now why I have an unconformity at the bottom and an unconformity at the top. And that is vital for understanding how we can recognize these in the rock record. So hopefully that kind of cleared up what a sloss sequence is for you.